this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to tell you that you might be negatively impacting the performance of your graphics card without even realizing it, and I did so while building in the Lian Li Evo RGB with Corsair's IQ Link system and the MSI MPG Z790 Edge TI Max Wi Fi motherboard. And this may actually happen on a number of different boards with a number of different setups, so I think it's worth highlighting. This board can support multiple different NVMe SSDs, and that's what I went about doing, installing multiple different PCIe Gen 4 drives, as well as Corsair's MP700 Pro Gen 5. However, one thing that was immediately highlighted by Hardware Info 64 is that the X16 slot, the way the graphics card is plugged into, is now running with 8 lanes instead of 16. And I want to talk to you about what impacts this can have and why it's something to keep in mind. Now this is a Gen 5 drive that I'm installing here, the MP700 Pro that I've done a video on separately, that can run up to 12,000 megabytes per second read speed. A pretty nifty addition to your gaming PC, assuming that you have the board to run it, and it does indeed lead to fast load speeds, and this motherboard does support it in the top slot. You don't see many boards that support Gen 5 drives at the moment, although the number will be expanding, and this is an interesting drive because it has its own heat shield and fan, so you can see it requires SATA power, for example. It's a bit of a chunky monkey in order to run it cool and fast. On paper, this is a pretty decent setup. The only negative impact that you'll see is that this drive installed in that slot will result in less lanes for your graphics card. And this is even noted in the motherboard's specs list. So if you scroll down in the specs list, you'll see that although the storage is listed here, uh, that M2 slot as the top one being Gen 5, that there is an asterisk note on it in the small print saying that when doing so, you'll be running the PCIe slot at X8. Now, what is the actual impact of this? I have actually done this in the past, testing and running systems with multiple drives in them where the lanes have been halved. And this time I wanted to go through and test and show the results of it so you can see for yourself what the impact of this is. Now you can see a lot of this data in Hardware Info 64, as I said, which is a free download that you can run, which will immediately show you things like this, including MVME speeds that you can check you're actually getting the right number of lanes there, but also seeing stuff like the data on your graphics card. Now, if you go into here and go into the video adapter settings and then click on the graphics card, you can see here that it's PCIe version four x16 but it's actually running at eight lanes so x8 at 16 giga transfers a second so not perfect so what i wanted to do is actually put this through some testing to see what impact this had so i ran rainbow six siege 3d mark port royale test and heaven benchmark uh, on the system both with the drive in and not in so that i could show the difference the scores so i wanted to test and show what impact this had. So cranking up graphics on Rainbow Six Siege to the maximum and then running a benchmark on it. Now this is at 1080p it's worth noting and also it's worth noting that the experience is going to vary from game to game depending on what game you're running. The Rainbow Six Siege for example is quite CPU bound and intensive in that area so if you're running a graphically intensive game where it requires more GPU power you may get different results. But you can see here that I'm getting 421 FPS average and a maximum of 576 with it in this setting so we have eight x lanes running on the system and that's the performance result that you'd get from this now for the sake of fairness i've done these tests obviously multiple tests i'll show you side by side in a second but here you can see that i've removed the drive and then looking at hardware info 64 you can see it's now running at x16 lanes instead so you've got maximum bandwidth running through there and basically I ran through the same tests again with both Heaven Benchmark, Rainbow Six Siege and the 3D Marks tests as well. So I'll show you them in a second. But the difference here is now we're getting 478 FPS and a maximum of 617. So there's already been quite an increase in the FPS there. So you can see immediately that it does make a difference. So you are actually reducing your performance there. But it doesn't seem on paper, at least here in Rainbow Six, that it's a massive difference necessarily. But obviously it is a difference nonetheless. So if you're populating multiple slots on your motherboard, you might be reducing your performance. If we put the two results side by side, you can see here that the GPU is under more load with 16 slots. So it is actually being used more and it is giving better performance across the board. Even the minimum FPS that you're getting is also higher 
than it was with X8 lanes. So certainly a reduction there. Now, this is just one game. So we want to do some other tests and see what we're getting elsewhere. So with 3D Mark Port Royale, which is a ray tracing test, we can see that you're getting a score of 13,166 with eight lanes, 13,372 with 16 lanes. So again, an increase there, more FPS with more lanes makes sense. Again, it doesn't seem like a massive score difference. And you see that we're a little bit below the average there. But we also are still getting a pretty good FPS across the board. So it's getting around 60 FPS and eight lanes and peaking at about 100. And then similar sort of results when you look at the X16 version of that as well. So some interesting results here, I think. Again, it'll be worth testing multiple games and trying these things out for yourself. But if we look at Heaven Benchmark, again, very small difference here. Very small difference in the average FPS and very small difference in the other areas too. So it really is going to vary depending on what we're throwing at it in terms of the graphical performance, ray tracing and other things. And this is also only at 1080p. Perhaps there'll be a bigger difference at 4K, for example. Unfortunately, I can't test that right now. What I can test is a couple of other games. So I've taken Red Dead Redemption 2, put it on maximum settings, and then run the same tests again. Weirdly, there's a bit of a discrepancy here because obviously you'll see it's 16 lanes for some reason. Uh, the minimum FPS was 3. That was obviously not correct. But you will notice that the average FPS is roughly the same in here with just a slight difference on the maximum. Running Assassin's Creed Valhalla, again at 1080p, again maximum settings. I wanted to put these two tests side by side as well, just to show a good variety of more graphically intensive games than the others. And you'll see the differences here are again fairly minimal. You're looking at a 163 average FPS and there is a slightly lower max FPS on the 16 lanes here, which is intriguing, but it does show that there sometimes is very little difference between the two. So I'd recommend checking it out for yourself, making sure that you test your motherboard to see whether you're actually halving the lanes of your GPU in the first place, because some other boards that I've seen actually don't do this. For example, the ROG Strix 2, which I'm running at the moment with multiple NVMe SSDs in it, doesn't have this problem. So it's not there for every single motherboard, but it is worth noting. Sometimes it's if you populate the top slot on your motherboard. Sometimes it's just if you fill multiple drive ports. Sometimes it's if you're using a Gen 5 drive like this. And sometimes you can fill them all with no problems whatsoever. I think it's worth highlighting, but it's also worth checking your specs on your motherboard and your own system and testing these things yourself to be sure. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, consider subscribing and drop me a comment down below. Let me know if you knew this already. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.